and we're live hello everyone let's just wait for a couple of minutes until uh, it propagates and everyone gets in hi Ahmed how you doing welcome to the live chat hmm Ahmed, how you doing? Ahmed and Ahmed. So we've got two Ahmed. That's awesome. That's interesting. And what a coincidence. Hi, both. How's it going? Hello, Czech Republic. Welcome aboard. Yeah. How's the weather there? Must be freezing cold. Hello, Germany. How you doing, guys? Seventy D is a good camera to start with. Yeah, Canon does that pretty well. Angelo. No, it just started. Uh, I wanted to record a video, but then I thought, you know what? I haven't been here for ages, so why not? just show my face and you can see I'm a mess hi Australia how you doing how are you Scott hey Donald Damien Plesko in the house watch out for this guy the Photoshop quiz in the <clears throat> ask hole <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, I want to try something. Um, so, the one I, where is it? Hang on, guys. It's very hard to see with my setup. I'm currently, I do have the Wacom Cintiq in front of me. It's so big. I don't want to move this camera, but let me, I don't know if you see it. It's, it's taking the entire space up. All right. Hello, Belgium. Hey. To Za, I guess, if that's. Yeah, Walter, how you doing? Matthias. Hey, you're welcome. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Uh, so I just wanted to see if I can actually play. And I'm going to play a video through the streaming service and let me know if, it, if you can hear the audio, because I don't. All right, so here we go. Ready? So this is my first time. There's a first time for everything. Okay, let's do that. One, two, and... No, if you hear. What is going on, you do me? My name is Mo, a car photographer from Bahrain. And in this session, I'm going to show you how to turn this photo into this using Lightroom and Photoshop. Now, it's worth mentioning that this tutorial or this premium video is meant for intermediate to advanced user. Those who knows tools knows how to use Photoshop knows how to use masks and knows how to use the pen tool now if you're not familiar with these tools don't worry I've left some free previews on my previous course make sure to check them out now we're going to start with Lightroom and apply the basic global adjustments and take this photo from this state into this and then of course move it into Photoshop fixing the white color on the cars and then applying certain adjustments applying local adjustments global adjustments we're going to amplify the environment and also we're going to change the color of the car which is quite challenging based on the feedback that i got from my youtube subscribers so i'm going to show you all these tricks within this session so make sure not to miss out you bought for free how it's impossible. Uh, that would be the 24-105. I always say that. 24-105 is my favorite lens. No matter where I go, what I do, it remains my favorite lens. So 24-105. So yeah, I've been, uh, I've been very busy lately and... Uh, 
Um, I took some time off just to record two premium tutorials. Uh, they are available on Udemy. I don't know if you're familiar with the site. So let me bring that up. Oh, it's on the other end. So the one that I recently published is this one over here. I don't know if you see it. Of course you do. I don't because I got the entire a light reflecting of the Wacom. So this is one and I do have a coupon discount um, selling it for 9.99 and it's going to be for a limited time. Um, then it will go back to its um, original price, which I think it was 34 or something. And the other one that I published about a week or so is this one. Uh, it's currently on sale because of the New Year's, but it's going to go away in a few days, I guess, five days. But uh, yeah, I'm going to create um, the coupon code. Unfortunately, I can't go below nine. For some reason, they don't allow it. Um, but yeah, so make sure to check these out. I don't think I added a link to this one. But let me... Let me show you the Photoshop file for now. Yeah. So Ahmed, the f-stop is uh, f4. So yeah, I always go with a fixed prime lens. Ah. Ah, oh, sorry. No. <laughs> Dang, I whew, thought I, I, I put out a free coupon for that. But no, 35 mm is good, but it's fixed. The problem with fix is I just, you know, don't have control with um, the lens. So yeah. Moose. All right, so... Um, yeah, including within this Jaguar tutorial, uh, I've, I've uh, packed it with a lot that you can download. Um, well, let me show it to you. It's something that I've worked on. So a set of adjustments that I turned into a lot. So here's the before photo and um, here's the after. And that's gonna come with um, the Jaguar F-Type tutorial. So let me show you the breakdown. Um, fixing the whites, dodging and burning. I haven't done a lot, to be honest. I did a bit on the car and the shadows, but you can do for the rest of the items over here. And um, for this, I have used, well, Camera Raw, and then I found an alternative software, which I only unveil in the tutorial have a look at it and it just like brings everything to life but of course it's not like a preset and then the uh, the LUT itself that you can apply let me put the LUT at 100% so this is how it looks it's kind of uh, blue and orange not orange and teal more like blue and orange and then um, I'm going to show you how to change the color of the car. But of course, you have to be a whiz with masking and the pen tool. And then emphasizing the environment. How to get more out of the environment. Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? Yeah, do you like my new setup? The mic going upwards. I kind of like this. The Wacom Cintiq. I'm going to get a sip. So 
So if you do have any questions, whether about this course, what it covers, or the other course and what it covers, just let me know. I've left a link actually in the description, but hang on, let me, let me paste this one up. Hey, 85, what up? How you doing, buddy? Alex McKenzie. I don't know, I didn't get into that detail. Um, headlights, not quite sure. I don't know, I like the Ferraris. Sorry about that, they look gorgeous. Or the Audis, actually, if you see them from a distance. At the LAS, it's online. I've just posted a link. Uh, you can check the description for the link as well. It has a discount on it. Um, it's only at 9.99. I think I missed the question. Do you do most of your shots in the morning and the sunset? Yes, I do. Most of the time I do. You get software lights, you get more details, no harsh shadows, no harsh highlights. It contrasts, the contrast is less. So yeah, can I buy through mobile? Yes, you can buy from through mobile. You can watch it on your mobile and uh, you can do it through any, any, any platform, Angela. Hey, Toby, how you doing? Uh, close up, not sh quite sure. To be honest, I haven't seen the details. I remember shooting the Porsche. I think it was the Boxer. One of the Porsches. The headlines were amazing. Hang on, let me, let me find you that shot since you brought it up. And I'm looking for it. So bear with me. And I hopefully do find it somewhere here. Please be here somewhere. Well, it's not it. It's a similar photo, but let me bring it up. So this is the shot. I think it's a Miami blue Porsche. I can't recall is it a Boxer or a... can't recall. But anyways, he, have a look at the details. You can see the details in the headlights. It's just so beautiful, so gorgeous, in fact. Where is the chat? There you go. <laughs> Shit, puke all the way, Alex. Take care, buddy. So most of it uh, was I it was self-taught. But when I say self-taught, meaning I've I've tried things on my own. I've looked at courses. <laughs> Actually, I looked at some of the tutorials that had nothing to do with car photography. I looked at product photography, beauty and fashion, just to understand the post-processing techniques that they use. Bit of uh, trial and error um, and led to these kind of shots. My favorite Photoshop tool, Photoshop. <laughs> I don't know, um, I guess masks, it's masking and selection. I think this is the most powerful thing that you can do. So I always tell my uh, subs that if you wanna be really good in Photoshop, you need to learn two tools to start with. One of them is masking and the other th one is um, the pen tool, the selection tools. Hey, Scorpius, and this one, uh, uh, that was just some one light. And I had my friend um, holding it upright. It's called a Miami blue. Well, Mexico blue maybe, but yeah, it was a Mi Miami blue. The eraser. 
Yeah, the eraser is not really. I never use the eraser. Never, almost. But one percent maybe. Lambo, Lambo, Lambo. Yeah, one. I do have one. There you go. I was shot uh, during Cars and Coffee Bahrain, and uh, it happened so fast. So uh, it was during an event gathering car event show. So I just asked them to position the car the way it is and clicked it. Do you find yourself using luminosity channels? No. I mean, I do have Raya Pro. It's just never um, tried it. And I'm pretty sure it's very useful. But I just didn't get my head around it yet. Hello, Germany again. So it's Germany and Belgium taking over. No, uh, light painting, one shot, especially with cars, it's very hard. Um, I don't know if it's possible, but you need multiple lights maybe. And um, they have to be at a certain power to not to overexpose it. I'm assuming it's possible, of course, but you might need a lot of lights and reflectors and blockers as well. You're welcome, NFS. Thank you so much, buddy. I wish you all the best. Yeah, well, the clouds were uh, were added afterwards. Yeah, it, 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 these are fake. And uh, maybe within this shot, they weren't blurred. So I think they, I should have blurred them just a little bit. So if you, if you see at the back here, where is my mouse? Oh, there it is. So if you see at the back here, I don't know if you see it. It's very hard. But anyway, uh, it's not sharp at the back and that's because the focus is on the car. So you get a little bit of blur. And so you need to match the blur of this with the clouds. No, 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 no strobes used in the tutorial. So both shots um, were strobe free. So this, for example, uh, I did not use a strobe, it's just natural light. Multiple exposure and the other one as well, which is the uh, alpha shot, where is it? There, no strobes were used. Just a single uh, image, actually. So first, I show you how to prepare it in Lightroom, because it's a mess in Lightroom. Let me bring it up. So this is the before. This is exactly how the photo looks like. Now, if you have a good camera with a good dynamic range, you would recover the details properly. Um, I happen to have the a7 III, which has a really good dynamic range. And uh, yeah. My best, well, my best camera, they say the best camera is the one that you own. Um, for me, uh, I, I got used to the a7 III, the Sony a7 III. I think it's, it's just one of the best cameras. I used to own the a7R II. And I sold it for the a7 III because I wanted a balance of uh, photo and video. Also, the a7 R2 or, and the a7 R3, they shoot at 42 megapixels, which is very uh, CPU intensive. Now, I don't do a lot of outdoor and a lot of photography myself, so uh, I don't need all of that megapixels for, 
for, for what I do. Um, but yeah, I wish I do have the A7R3 when I needed it for uh, 42 megapixels. It, that's a lot of megapixels to, to have and play around with. Uh, so I would say the A7, yes, Sirius is still my favorite. I'm based in Bahrain, um, so I live and work in Bahrain. I don't have, well, I don't know if you would call that a race car, but let me show you my car. Where's my car? Hello. There it is. So that's the A7, oh, the A7, sorry, the RS3. Oh, I got confused. So I drive an RS3, a 2017 RS3. I don't have any other photo. I used to drive this before, the S3, the Sipanj Blue. But then I upgraded. Couldn't resist. Hello, amigo. Uh... What quick tricks do you, I do when I don't have hours to spend on a photo? If you don't have hours, then don't even think of selection. Um, I always recommend that you spend your time on a photo, and sometimes even days. I sometimes, just even with the, with the Jaguar um, shot itself, I posted one a few weeks ago or at the beginning of the year. A photo of the Jaguar before and after and then I realized that the color was crap the day after it's just sometimes that you lose your eye calibration and you don't see it properly so I always recommend that whenever you are done with a photo whether you spend hours minutes um, just keep it there for a day or two get back to it you will notice and you will realize that there is something wrong with it you want to change but if it's a matter of you don't have hours, uh, maybe a simple clean up, adding contrast, maybe a bit of um, saturation, color selective. I don't know. It depends on the photo. Thank you, Angelo. Thanks. Thank you, Rando. Rando. Thank you, Rando. Hello, Polish. It's a quite fast. It's a super fast car. Um, I'm really enjoying it. It's it's crazy. Uh, the funny thing is when people see it on the road, they don't realize how powerful it is until you get a pony car trying to uh, race. Then they realize how fast that thing is. But yeah, it's it's surprising. Here's another shot. But that's not my car. That's my friend's. Actually, it was Audi's and my friend bought it. Um, yeah. Yeah, very hard to notice mistakes when you're looking at a photo for a long time. So it's, it's sometimes it's very good just to have it on the side. Take a break, take an hour, take a day. Uh, then get back to it. So Navi here says, uh, use a, a, a reference photo to check if the color contrasts are fine. So <laughs> yeah, I think that would work. Sometimes you look at a photo and then you look back and you think, okay. But I, I do get confused sometimes, but that's a really, really good um, tip. I do that most of the time, yeah. I do. I do expose for different areas, right? If you give me a minute, I have the perfect example. Where was it though? Question of the day. Let me look for it. Like my dumpster? Mm-hmm. 
yeah, I wasn't really good with organization, as you can tell. It's bad. That's worse. Yeah, there it is. So, for example, this is Alfa Romeo. You're all familiar with. This is the 8C. So I exposed for the buildings and then for the car and maybe for the rims. Is this the final photo? Oh, doesn't it take ages to load? Let me let me load it up. It's on an external hard drive. It's loading. Give it some time. I think that's a 42 megapixel file. Sorry. Yeah, I always carry a polarizing filter. Always. Hey, Jamesy. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, it's been a while. Haven't been um, active, but here, there you go. I'm here. You go. Canon 77D. I don't know. Um, best lens. I think that's a crop sensor, but I'm not really sure. Guys, if you have any suggestion for Hugo for uh, crop sensor lenses, that's for the 77D. I always recommend the 24-105 L-series lens from Canon. I think it would fit, but it will give you different focal lengths. Damien. I haven't seen, I mean, I, I used to use the A7 R2 with an adapter for Canon lenses and I haven't seen a I don't have an issue with the quality of the photos but back with uh, with the adapter that I have which is the Metabones it had a lot of issues with the lens itself so it kept disconnecting every now and then and, and that's why I decided to go all native but I, what I know, it wasn't a Sigma adapter. What I know, the Sigma adapters are better and uh, they're more uh, reliable, I would say. Because the uh, if, if you opt in for the uh, lenses, which is Sony lenses are very expensive, especially if you go for G lens, they break the bank, but they're worth it. Yeah, I went native. I, I, I uh, survived a year or so, a year and a half with an adapter, and then whoosh, just moved. A time. You're welcome. You're welcome, uh, Garcia. Florida, so Florida. Hello. Wow, that's international. Thank you, thank you so much. Why do you hate this car? This is a beautiful car. Anyway, let's let's go to, to this. Oh, that was back at the time when I used the FX Pro. So if you notice in this photo, so it's so bright and then I brought in the other exposure. So this was exposed for the photo outside and then this for the car. Of course, I didn't use the pen tool. You can tell that it was a really uh, job, but you wouldn't tell. You can't tell because it's not really a composite. It's just different exposures. Channel mixer, selective color, color balance, and then you've got this. And uh, let me have an, I think I do have another example that you will like, love, like, love, love. Yeah, there it is. I did that the same way. 
this was multiple exposure uh, for CPL filters though. It just added a lot of colors. It was very experimental. Use another one, which is the front. Again, I added a lot of, a lot of colors, which I don't really like, which is overlays. So you should be very conservative when using overlays. In this shot, uh, I do have a tutorial, by the way. If you go back to my older videos, I show you a complete walkthrough. So this was a bit of strobing and a sunlight. So this is the sunlight, natural sunlight, and then the strobes coming in to um, illuminate the front of the car. Nice to see you too, we're blinded. I'm fine, thank you. Yourself. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of compositing, to be honest. Um, it's, I don't know. I don't know, maybe because I can tell a composite from a non-composite. But yeah. Likewise, AF, are you are you based in Bahrain, by the way? Shooting car interior. I do have a video on car interiors. I'm glad that you like, yeah. I, I, I love this car and I liked how, how the car all came together, the, the entire shots. This was just by using the sunlight, by the way. No effects were added. But the car color just played a big role in it. Um, so where were we, sorry? Yeah, car interiors. Yeah, I shoot, I shot my, I think, where is it? Let me look at it. If you look at my channel, I do have a tutorial covering a car interior shot. So this was a very wide shot. This was 16, I think. Well, it was a 16... 235, but I think it was shot at 20, maybe. This was, a, again, a combination of the sunlight and a Profoto B1 with a strap box up from above. Didn't have a bigger modifier, to be honest. Um, so that's why I used the strap, the, the strip, strap, strip box. And... Um, Here's another one. So this was shot in multiple ways and you can see, I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> this was, this shouldn't have been folded this way, but yeah, I forgot it. But anyway, I do, uh, I shot, I think that was three or four different strobes. So I strobed it from up above here, down, uh, maybe from the back seat, and one from the windshield up front you can tell one from the side and maybe one from this window and then combined it in Photoshop yeah Angelo this will be up later on so it's going to be live uh, other interior shot if you look at my channel I do have about uh, you know light painting the interior uh, maybe shots like these are nice to have as well. Oh, you're based in Bahrain. Wow. Uh, which one was early morning? Hmm. Which foil I was looking at. That was, I think, uh, on sundown. I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was. So 20, I think 20 to 24 is just about fine. I use, uh, I use 24 most of the time. So this, these shots were um, shot using 24, 105. I can zoom in and, and change. Why is it happening? What is happening? Keeps on rotating. And um, let me see if I can find it here. Which year was we in? Yeah. Q8. Not the Q8. Nope. Nope. Did I lose all my 2018 photos? That's interesting. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's in there. That's the thing with Macs, right? So when I bought the Mac, I thought I had a Thunderbolt connection. They didn't. So I couldn't connect my other hard, hard disks and hard drives. Let me just power this one up. Interesting. Did you, uh, did the good low light from the A7 III save for getting the shot? Um, I mean, to be honest, when I took, this is the A7 III. Um, but let me go back to the Jaguar shot because there's a story here to tell. So when I shot this, I didn't rely on uh, the camera. So the camera readings were telling me that this was underexposed and I had the metering mode on the car. But the thing is, I trusted my eyes and I shouldn't have done that. Um, and the reason why, because my, uh, or the camera or, or the screen was set for uh, a sunny, bright day brightness. <laughs> so, so whatever it was showing me, it was wrong, but the readings were right. And, and you know, sometimes, you know, with all the mess that is happening around, you're tired towards the end of the day, you spend the entire time doing that. I clicked it, but yeah, it's, you can save that easily in, in Lightroom, which I do also cover the details on how and, and what um, settings and how I approach it. But yeah, I mean, if you can look, you can uncover a lot of the details. Okay, now this is like horrendous, but you get the idea. So always ensure that you look at your metering mode and you look at the readings on the camera before clicking, because that um, affects. Uh, if you if you rely on on your screens, on your uh, camera screens, and you just look at it and you think it's exposed right, you need to make sure how bright the screen was because it affects um, your decisions. I don't know if that makes any sense. All right, where did we reach the comments? Lost track. Hey, Andy. Well, Andy, it does take some time. Sometimes, like I said, if it's a simple photo and I wouldn't want to work on it, it's like half an hour, 45 minutes. If it's something that like that that takes hours and sometimes days you just like work for on it for i don't know an hour two three leave it come back to it it really depends on the idea flows as well 
like how the ideas come to mind. And uh, sometimes you would, you would notice things when you take a break. You know, you're watching TV and you go like, aha, I got it. I need to do this, 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 and that. And sometimes if you, if you continuously work on a photo, it happens to me. If I work on a photo for two, three hours, I get bored. I get tired. So I, I feel like I need to finish this. And I don't. I don't have to finish it. I just need to put it aside, do my thing, go to the gym, watch TV, hang out with friends, sit with family, come back to it tomorrow or later on, and uh, continue working on it. Like Jimmy Zhang <laughs> takes months. Okay, not months. Takes weeks, maybe. Or maybe months. God knows. I hope he's not listening. But yeah, um, he takes his time. And that's why you can tell that his photos are really amazing. Truly amazing. Because he looks at the finest, smallest details. And he's he's very creative, very uh, uh, attention to detail driven. But yeah, so again, it really depends on the time that you have as well. Oh, there are multiple ways. So with the brush, you can, you can select multiple times if you want to hide the plate number, uh, brush it once, twice, pick, sample the color and then um, brush, brush, sample, brush, brush. Of course, you need to select all of that. Sample, brush, brush. And then once you add the color, you need to add some noise to this because it will look very digital. So you add a noise, I think, between 1, I think, or 0.5. I can't recall. But yeah, you it's easily done you can also use a gradient tool to um, have bright to dark kind of um, look oh don't die on me come back see angelo More caffeine. Oh yeah. Um, I left it in the description, Angela. Um, here it is. You can look at my profile as well. It has um, the rest of the tutorials basically. Oh, no, you're not the only one that takes a while to edit, by the way. Again, it, sometimes, you see, sometimes what happens is people tend to run into the photo without knowing what they want to do. Uh, spend five, ten minutes thinking, okay, here's what I need to do, and here's what I need to remove, here's what I need to keep, and not necessarily get all the ideas at once. Because sometimes, while you're working, it hits you, right? So something comes into your mind, okay. This is something that I need to do. So add it to the list or add it to, yeah, to your edit list. How do I work with reflections of the car? Uh, I use a CPL filter. I'm not sure if I used one here, to be honest, because there are a bit of reflections. Um, I think I explained it in my other tutorial, which is this one. Maybe I can play the trailer, or maybe I don't. Hang on, let me play the trailer of this video. Let me see if I can do that again. 
<laughs> it's gonna be fun. Um, how do I do that? Yeah, okay, I'm going to play the trailer for the other course. Recordings, not the Jaguar, it's the Porsche. Then, compressed intro. Let me just make sure. Oh, yeah, it's going to play. There you go, B21, and I'm going to read your comments while it plays. What is going on, Udemy? My oh, name is Mo, a car photographer way. from Bahrain. Right. And in this session, I'm going to show you how... Wrong video. <laughs> um, Porsche, bro. Yeah, that's the right video. Why is it playing the wrong video then? Hmm. Let me try that again. It is. What's going on, you do me? My name is Mo, a car photographer from Bahrain, also known as Action Scripter. In this premium tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get this photo into this just using Photoshop. Now, this premium tutorial is aimed at people who knows how to use Photoshop just the basic tools at least um, the pen tool and the masking and how it all works however I do explain how to use the tools and I've packed it with a lot of resources that will help you um, understand how the tools work now on top of that I've supplied this premium tutorial with the three uh, let's say row files and that you can download decompress and follow along so don't miss out go ahead and buy this course and you will definitely enjoy it. All right. So, yep. There is a lag a bit, but yeah. You get the point. See ya, Ahmed. Uh, the one in the garage. I don't know. I need to. Yeah, I might do one. Just need some time to do a full. Like, you know, how to position the car, how to light paint and do things. So, take some time. Uh, so, yeah, this course, I explain how I use the CPL filter to enhance reflections, remove reflections. Because you wouldn't want to remove every single reflection. Otherwise, it's going to look flat one of the photos that i really like is not available here how come where is it maybe the projects Yeah, I guess this is the one. So I really like this shot. Uh, you can see I could have added more maybe of the white reflection here. But if you remove everything, then you will end up with this. You can tell though. Can you tell the differences of the photo? Look at the right, left. So this portion here, if you can see, um, was removed in Photoshop by painting. So I painted that and I think I demonstrated that in a few tutorials on YouTube. This is the before, this is the after. Maybe it's quite overly saturated, but I wanted that look. So 
to have the different looks. Here's the Damian Plisco. If you haven't seen that tutorial, hit to my channel, have a look at it. Um, hmm. I don't know if I have more here. The Q7 edit. Yeah, I did a tutorial on that as well. Hey, George. You're welcome, I guess, if that's for me. Hey, Carbon Photography. How you doing, Leo? You all right? It's been a while. So, yeah, um, do check the courses out, the premium ones. Uh, this one has a limited offer um, running at 9.99, and it's going to end by next month, and it has limited seats as well. So grab it while you can. It has also the LUT that we spoke about. It does come with this. So this is the LUT that I've newly introduced. And uh, I'm going to use this LUT as well in the tutorial as a bonus. I also unveil, what did I unveil? The Camera Raw alternative, which I really think that you should check out because I'll tell you why. So this is <clears throat> up until here. Now, that is an improvement. And the good thing about the software, it, it goes down to the details. I'm not gonna tell you, unless if you subscribe. I'm gonna tell you in the future though. But I also show you how to use it. What are the adjustments that I've used within that software and why is my laptop dying? All right, while we can, I don't know if it's going to connect really. Yeah, it's disconnected. I didn't share that photo before. Yeah, just didn't like it. Let me fix the laptop part. Hang on, let me reconnect. Moe's MacBook Pro. Connect. Oh, come on. Hang on guys, lots of obstacles here. Okay. Wouldn't, um, yeah, there you go, we're connected. This should come to life in a bit. connected That's because you got ejected all right let's see Thank you, Leo. Yeah, uh, I think I've been, the guys here, uh, you know, the subscribers or the followers on YouTube been telling me and even on Instagram been asking for a way because I showed how to change the colors of a blue car or yellow car, but changing the color of a white car was the challenge part, challenging part. So 
that's why the tutorial is here. My laptop is not functioning and this is not going to load. Sorry. I wanted to show you more, but yeah. Well, that's better. I like my LMS R3. <laughs> yeah, that was just for fun. It got soaked in water. Yeah, so I'm back to work tomorrow after a couple of weeks of break. So fun, guys. Hi, new Chipfoos. It's uh, it's not it's not hard. It just need, needs time and positions. Where was it? It was here somewhere, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. We're getting closer. Now this one. And let's edit it in. <sighs> Sorry. This is done through the laptop and the hard disk is not loading at the moment. Because Apple, I can't connect it to my Mac or iMac. Thanks to Apple, because they've removed more ports that we need. Aha, there we go came to life. is loading somewhere that's 42 megapixels for you as well So I'm going to show you this. And if you have any questions, let me know right now. Because I think I'm going to leave in a bit. Oh, you know, I have to get my hair done. <laughs> Need to groom for tomorrow. And it's still loading, sorry. Well, oh, there you go, load it. So let's have a look. I can't recall exactly what I did. So I squished down the photo. But what I did basic is very basic. Um, I copied the back wheel and I masked it. So if this is the original. So I masked it back. Okay. I think this is the smoke. So I added a smoke and I masked 
the smoke as well. And then I did the same thing with the other wheels. So if we look at it, this is without the mask. And if we bring the mask back, so I just mask out and try and adjust it to the position of the car or the wheel. Position of everything, actually. And yeah, I think that's about it. So it's just a matter of copying the original wheels, putting it in front. If you want to copy anything else, then you can do that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, the rest is pretty straightforward. I just zoomed it in. So if you look at the original photo, So I copied the wheel, both wheels, and so the first thing you want to do is copy the wheels, and then I shrank the car. Most likely, and you can see I made it in a square size as well. So it's just Control T and. hit the new version of Photoshop. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Like that, and then, ooh, that was a close call. Yeah, but, and then by reach to the size. And, um, added the smoke here, and the smoke here. And, yeah, and the wheels, that's it. Done. That I think that's it's just straightforward. You can try it a few times until you nail it. You need to be good with masking though. It's not really a tutorial. This is like more like a walkthrough, I would say. But yeah, it's life. Yeah, so I think we're done. If you have any questions, let me know now or or I'm done. And I need to go and work out. If I copy the front wheel, won't affect the exposure of the color? No, why would it? No, it shouldn't. Let's just copy. If you see, let's, let me show you the wheel then. So this is the wheel, and this is the mask. Let's have a look. Oops. Let's put this one back. So it doesn't affect the colors. No, no. Never tried to make a limo out of the original one. I mean, these projects are nice, good to have. But they enabled one of the layers. Yeah, I just didn't want to add these. But yeah, uh, it's good to practice with these because you learn a lot with it. So you learn more in Photoshop because it's a fun way of learning Photoshop. Thank you, Fish2. Thank you. Well, guys, thank you uh, for joining in. And um, don't forget also to rate for those of you who is going to purchase the premium tutorial. Don't forget to rate it up. It helps me a lot and will help others understand um, when evaluate the course. 
Um, thank you for joining in, joining me in today. And thanks, Damien, for uh, hijacking my session uh, along with Sen. <laughs> but yeah, that was fun. I'll see you in the next video. I will promise you that I'm going to do more, given that I have time. But yes, stay tuned for the next video. And I'm out. I need to close it.